Anyone that's at the top knows it never comes easy. I wouldn't have even contacted her for sparring. She's not there yet, so I mean, she might not realise. She's just, she talks too much. She thinks that she's the only one that's done this before. I don't think about the risks when I go into that fight. I just think what I'm going to do to that person. I want to hurt her in every way possible. She's in trouble, not me. I don't like her. I don't really give a fuck, to be honest. I have morals, she doesn't. <laughs> I would be maybe a little bit bitter too if I'd been in the sport for a long time, getting paid shitty money. I'm in that ring, I, I want to hurt them physically, I want to hurt them mentally. You know, when I win, I am going to be like, yeah, how's that? Like, how'd it feel to get beat by a skanky stripper? Like, I want her to be in that ring going, holy shit, what am I doing here? I'm going to go in there and break a heart. She's going to question everything about why she does this sport. Welcome to the Ebony Bridges show, hey? And still. I get like people are like, I'll walk into the shop and be like, oh, that's a blonde bomber. <laughs> <laughs> or like people beeping at me and shit. Boxer, I am the boxer, yeah. <laughs> I my wife, I swear, why would she be here though? Yeah, I just love Villa Ricky. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a boxer, yeah. Yeah, thanks. <laughs> when, when I win my fight, they're going to put me up in here and I have my picture in here. It'll be really cool. That's what they said. You think you're a bigger name than Harry Kane? <laughs> Who's Harry Kane? No, I'm joking. <laughs> Hello, I'm Ebony Bridges, the blonde bomber, the IBF Bantamweight world champion and I'm about to fight Shannon O'Connell to have my first world title defence up in Leeds Arena. You going good? You, you, finishing, you finished school early or something? Yeah, I just picked Oh, you guys are lucky. Nice song, guys. When's your next fight? 10 days. 10 days. Yeah. Yeah, I can't wait. Yeah, ready. Always ready. Appreciate it, mate. See you. Hey, babe. I'm good. How are you? Good, good. Always comes in and gives me some great coffee, looks after me, he's great for the community. <laughs> Killing it. Come in most days, on my walk, I come get a, a cortado and then I go for my walk, get my steps, you know, get fresh air because I'm, I'm always inside, I'm always in the gym or I'm resting at home. Combat sports has been part of my life since I was young. I started martial arts when I was five, you know. So, you know, fighting, in school or you know in the street is it's fighting's always been part of my life i like hitting people <laughs> so i was like you know what why not do it and make money from it feels like home for me i'm um, here in the uk and obviously i've just moved here uh in june and yeah like you know these guys and like everyone around this this street and stuff you know as you just saw before you know people know and and they're so they're so welcoming and it's really good to have such close close friends and that feel like family because it doesn't make me miss home as much. My last fight, they tried to force me to eat jellied eels and like literally let's do it. And then my trainer's like, just do it. You come all the way over here. You're not even going to try some fucking jellied eels. And I'm like, oh, I'm going to vomit. Pull that in. Let's fuck off. I know boxing more than I know my own life. I've been in there 80 times. I, I've done this so many times that it, it's more the normal to me than, than living everyday life. If you want something hard enough and you work hard enough to get it, you'll get there. I don't want people to think that I just got gifted something. I, I really have busted my ass for 20 years in this sport and, and I've done everything the hard way. I'm not about the, the bright lights and the fame of it. I feel like I am the better fighter and I've done the work. And if, if that means I get called the world champion, then I deserve that. The rivalry probably came from, I don't like the way Ebony conducts herself. I've got a 15 year old daughter. And if I was doing what Ebony's doing, it would be basically telling my 15 year old daughter, get your clothes off and you can get what you want in life. That's not what I'm about. Um, it's guy or girl, doesn't matter who you are and what you've done, work hard for what you want. She's been calling me out for like two years, <laughs> calling me all kinds of names. She started saying things about me, calling me like a skanky stripper and saying I'm no good and I just take my clothes off and I just show my bits and you know, trying to get my attention, which I obviously ignored because as soon as I say someone's name from my mouth, it gives them exposure. I don't fancy doing that for free. But considering I'm getting paid now, I, would, I don't mind hyping the fight up and uh, bringing some attention to it. Welcome to the Ebony Bridges show, hey? Here is the exciting and popular Aussie 
She knows what she's doing, getting on those scales half naked in her lingerie. She knows what she's doing, buying Eddie Hearn, the sunnies. She knows everything she's doing. Eddie was checking something in the ceiling, wasn't he? I'm sure. Oh, it's nice lighting. I think I can see what he was looking at. Oh, yeah, some pipes, a leak in the pipe up there, I think what it was. Yeah, good that he's keeping an eye on the venue and yeah. stuff like that. Anyway. So for her to be acting dumb, saying, oh, I'm just doing what everyone else is doing, no, she's not. She knows what she's about. Yeah, just jealous, envy, bitter. I would be maybe a little bit bitter too if I'd been in the sport for a long time and um, getting paid shitty money and then you've got, you know, me that comes along and in a couple of years I'm world renowned international. I don't know where this jealousy thing comes from. Like, I, I don't want, I don't want the, the fakeness, social media. I, I'm not about that. She said a lot of bad about it. She said I'm mentally weak. I don't think she is very mentally strong um, when it comes to the fights and nerves and stuff like that. I'm, I mean, I've heard stories. I know some people don't even watch their opponents. I was doing some boxing, I don't even watch it, they just listen to their coach, but I'm not like that. I like to see the face and visualise her head getting punched in. She's just, she talks too much. She, I think she forgets what she says, so she contradicts herself every time she opens her mouth. I don't like her. I don't really give a fuck, to be honest. <sighs> me and Shannon are very different. She doesn't understand me. Um, she doesn't get what I, what I do and what I'm about. And, you know, you look at me and you think I'm just like this this princess dummy, whatever, but everything I've done has always not been what I look like. You know, mathematics teacher, master's degree. 20 years ago, I was a mechanic. You know, then I was doing bodybuilding, which was very masculine. Um, completely different to what you would stereotypically judge someone that looks like me. And, and that's the message that I push. Don't judge a book by its cover. <laughs> Anyways, so Sam, did you go, did you go watch some football? Yeah, a lot of people think because I'm so how I am that I'm quite extroverted, but I'm not very social outside of work and boxing and stuff like that because I give so much of my energy out to everyone and um, for myself as well, like I'm always on it that when I'm, when I'm not having to do things that have got to do with my work or whatever, I just leave me alone. I like to just chill by myself. And me and Gracie, hey, Gracie here. Hey. My mum knows, she knows that I was born for greatness and that I was born for big things and then she knows that and she has no doubt. I've sacrificed everything in my life to be here. No one can outwork me, you know. My dedication to the sport, my discipline and my everything that I put into it. Anyone that's at the top knows it's never comes easy um, and she's not there yet so I mean she might not realise but um, hey people say things and she can believe whatever she wants. Yes, Australia scored. Did we? We scored. Yes, go Australia. <laughs> How good's that? <laughs> yes. Philip's hiding in the toilet. Um, changing my, my biggest problem has been getting a sweat up. So I put my sauna suit on this morning and, and ran in it and I was like, it was a puddle everywhere and my shoes were wet. So I was like, I, I need them for tomorrow. I need to run tomorrow. So we put them in the oven. It was like, pools of sweat <laughs> both sides on the other treadies. Oh, it was disgusting. People say, what do you do in your spare time? Like, I try and do anything fun I can with this kid, because he's 16. He doesn't want to have fun with his bum anymore. Do you want some steak? It's a bit hot at the moment. Growing up, I, I, I didn't have a lot. Uh, my, my dad died when I was two and my mum was a, a drug addict. Um, she ended up dying of a heroin overdose. So um, I started, when I turned 18, 19, I started going out partying a lot and, and it took for one person to pretty much say she's gonna be just like her mother, for me to dig my heels in and, and make the difference, make the change in my life. A boxing ring is a safe place for me. It's where I feel um, the most in control um, because no matter what's happening outside, once I walk into a gym or into a boxing ring, I'm, I'm, in, I'm in control and, and everything else just sort of shuts out. It'll be extremely special to, to win this world title. The path that I've created has, has all led to this one moment. I've always said from the start, if I could tell my story and change one person's life, then it was all worth it. Well, this is what will make it really worth it to them as well as me. It'll show them that anything's possible. I don't think about the risks when I go into that fight, I just think what I'm going to do to that person. 
that person is in my way. They're in the way of my goals. They're in the way of my destiny and what I'm meant for. I don't like her. She's disrespected me in a lot more ways than just my boxing. She said personal things about me. You know the, the saying, fake it till you make it? Well, she did that and she made it. I beat the longest reigning world champion in my division. A very experienced world champion. She proved to the world that she's a worthy champion. I really enjoy working with her because she's a real astute student. She's a proper, proper, diligent worker. As soon as I won that belt, I was like, okay, gold ticks, now what? She's one dimensional, but she's tough. I know that she's, she's tough and she wants this. She's so hungry for this. She doesn't have the skill set that I've got. She, she doesn't have the experience that I've got. She's had 30 professional fights. She's had six losses, but you look at those six losses. One was early, four round or early on in her career, and the rest of them are the top of the tree girls, you know. Ebony's a real fighter, she's real grit, but I think it's gonna take a bit more than what she's got at this stage of her career to beat somebody like Shannon. I'd be like, yeah, how's that? Like, how'd it feel to get beat by a skanky stripper? Like, I wanna hurt her in every way possible. I will punch holes through that girl. Everything that I say I'm gonna do, I do it. I've done it. I love to fight, she loves to fight. Win or lose, doesn't matter what happens in this fight, it's gonna be exciting for the fans. You know, hit her hard and remind her, you know, there's only one blonde bomber and she's gonna be in for a hard, rough night.